Well, good evening, folks. It's great to be able to spend a bit of time this evening to think about our next spiritual discipline of stewardship. Um, but before we get into that, we're going to watch a video from the guys who uh, run Soul Food. So, um, so we'll watch a quick video together, and they'll just be highlighting what it involves, what it entails, um, and uh, I'll give us a headline about how we can get involved with that as well. So let's watch together. Here we are, it's half past one on Tuesday and the food is being prepared for dinner for soul food. So what's on the menu today, Sue? A chicken and ham pasta bake, or a vegetarian alternative, and a white chocolate uh, pudding thing. Sounds good. It will be, it will be. And, uh, and how Lots of vegetables. It, and uh, how, uh, how long does it take you to cook that? Well, there's been so many people are here to help with the vegetables, but I'll be fine. Very good. Hi, guys. Hi. 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 Here's the empty hall. We need to furnish it for the guests to arrive. And that's about to start now. Here's the menu. Very nice. Okay, guys, we're ready for service. Yeah. Yay! Thank you. Service about to start. seen a little taster of what happens each week at Soul Food um, and as you can see it's quite a big job and we would absolutely love for you guys to get involved um, even if it's just once in a blue moon we are running really low as it comes into summer and we would hate to have to um, cancel the meal for a couple months just because we don't have enough people so um, if you can get involved if you as a home group could get involved and then head on to your home group after, that would be amazing. Great. Uh, really great to see the kind of uh, ministry in action. So thanks so much for the, the video there, guys. And yeah, hopefully that may have prompted you to think maybe you've got a bit of time for that. Um, so just to, just to highlight what it involves. So at 2 p.m. Uh, is when the food prep begins, stack rubbers. Uh, then 4.45 is when the setup for the actual um, you know the tables and chairs and cutlery etc that's when we need help for that and then 5.30 is when the actual meal starts and that's when you'll get to interact with the folks coming along get some time to chat with them and get to know them and then at seven o'clock that's when uh, clear up is so uh, if you're interested in getting involved with that you can get in touch with uh, either Sarah White or Doug White uh, and your home group leaders should have their uh, contact details so if that's something you're, you're, you're prompted to think about getting involved with then uh, yeah get their get their phone number and send them a message uh, and see how you can uh, get started brilliant well uh, so as we think about our next spiritual discipline of stewardship I want you to think about this question have you ever had to plan your time and money so that you could achieve some kind of goal and imagine for most of us, that's probably a yes. You know, you may have had to budget in order to do university or had to save up to, to get a home or a car or something like that. We're all used to this idea a little bit of figuring out how to manage our resources. And this is what stewardship is all about. It's about how we manage our time and money, how we manage our homes and resources. And in the biblical view, it's, it's, it's more, than, more significant than just life management. Um, it's about using everything we have to the will and glory of God. And this whole idea is rooted in how God designed us to be in this world. So turn with me to Genesis uh, chapter 1, verses 27 to 28. And we see that this idea of stewardship is rooted right in the beginning. So Genesis chapter 1, chapter 1, verses 27 and 28. 
So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea, fish in the sea, and the birds in the sky, and over every living creature that moves on the ground. It's amazing to think that when God made us, he didn't make us to be mindless robots just shuffling around. Rather, God made us to be rulers under his sovereign rule, but, but rulers over creation. He gifted his good creation to Adam and Eve, to humankind, to be fruitful and to rule over it. And remember, this is, uh, this is not meaning humanity uh, were meant to exploit and domineer and exploit creation as we, as we see today. Um, let's take that abusive idea of ruling and stewardship out of our minds for a moment. Because in Genesis 2, so the next chapter on, verse 15, highlights what it was meant to be like. The Lord took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And of course, uh, Eve is made to be a helper to Adam and the two of them, male and female, steward and care for God's creation together. That's how it was meant to be. So let's take a pause there and think about this really broad picture of what biblical stewardship is. Um, I'll put a few questions on the screen and uh, you might be able to pause the video and be able to uh, work through them. So let me just get it up here and we'll put it on the screen for a few seconds. There we go. Great. So I'm sure we've had some interesting discussions there. I'm sure there's plenty of things that uh, you were discussing. Um, but for the second half of our time together, we're going to get a little bit more specific. We're going to think about how, as Christians, stewardship has a primary purpose. God has given us a role to steward his creation, but also because of the fall and because Jesus offers forgiveness, Christians have a mission to share Christ with all the people in the world. And as we manage our time, money and homes, all of this has to be directed towards the goal of people hearing the gospel. Uh, so we're gonna look at uh, one of the letters in the New Testament, 1 Corinthians and chapter 10. And the context here of to what is going on here in this letter is that the Corinthians are struggling to follow God's wisdom instead of the world's wisdom. For the Corinthians, the world is telling them that they should insist in their own rights and freedoms. Whereas God's wisdom was telling them to give up their rights and freedoms for the sake of others. And Paul, in these few chapters, has been demonstrating how he's been doing this for them. When Paul was ministering to them, when he planted this church and was preaching to them, he refused payment. Speakers were meant to get paid back in those times but he refused payment because he wanted the integrity of the gospel to be undisputed so instead of getting payment he worked his his trade as he was preaching he also changed the way he ate he changed the food that he ate he changed the the way he spent time with people he made decisions about his family life by not getting married all of these decisions uh, about how he manages his life are directed towards one aim. So let's turn to chapter 10, verse 31, and it, and it creeps into the first part of chapter 11 as well. So let's read that together. So this is what it says. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Do not cause anyone to stumble, whether Jews, Greeks, or the church of God, even as I try to please everyone in every way. For I am not seeking my own good, 
but the good of many, so that they may be saved. Follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Paul is seeking the, the good of many, not just for its own sake, but so that they may be saved. And so this is to be our guiding principle as we think about stewarding our resources. A couple of years ago, I was given uh, this book. Uh, so I wonder if you can see that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The title says, I will teach you to be rich. Now, if you're sat up in your chairs at this moment and uh, feeling a bit worried, then good, you're, you're paying attention. Brilliant. Um, but this book, all it really is, is just has some common wisdom, common sense wisdom about how to manage yourself, how to not be wasteful, how not to overspend, how to make good savings decisions, etc., etc. So there is an element to stewardship in which it is just good wisdom, how to be wise in the way you manage yourself. But the thing is, it's only really worth something if all of that is being directed towards people coming to know and love Jesus. That is the ultimate goal and aim. So I've got another book for you, which I think is far better. Um, it was called What's Best Next? What's Best Next? How the Gospel Transforms the Way You Get Things Done. And this is great because it helps to apply the wisdom of, to actually doing everything towards God's glory and sharing Jesus. And that's really critical because I was chatting to a couple of uh, pastors in different churches and they were speaking about how they were facing significant challenges in getting a church building. They wanted to be in the community, be able to have a base where they could do outreach to the community to show uh, what the gospel was and also to, to do good, to offer mercy ministry to the community. And they said the challenge to their congregation was that they had to make big sacrifices, downsizing houses, foregoing holidays abroad, etc. But they said that this was an incredibly healthy thing to do for the, for the church to do. Because as they prayed and as they used what they had, and they were able to afford a building, they were able to see the gospel impacting and changing their communities. So obviously it's much broader than just getting a building. But the way we use our resources, the way we use our time and money, we have to think about how we can use them for the best purpose of reaching others with the gospel. So we're going to spend a bit more time discussing this. Uh, there will be a few questions that come up. Uh, and then just go straight into praying for one another. Um, pray for one another as you think about how you can use all that you have uh, wisely for God's glory and for his gospel. I'll put the question up. change them. Great. So spend some time looking at these questions and then pray together. <laughs> 